Mukambika Temple in Karnataka State in southern India. It is one of the holiest temple and the only one that is dedicated to Godas Parvathi who embodies the powerful feminine aspect in Hindu religion. I have heard many stories from my friends about this temple and the energy there and the beautiful lush green mountain surrounding the temple. Luckily, this time I made it to South India and got my plans in place to see the Divine Mother and get her blessings. It is going to be a long journey from this Bengaluru Central Railway Station to Mysore on an overnight train, and from Mysore, a four-hour car ride to Mukambika. We were advised about Bengaluru City's notoriously heavy traffic, so we decided to arrive four hours early to the train station. The Indian railways have their own restaurants inside the train station and serve nice food with many choices including our favorite vegetable biryani and chapati with curry. If you have a huge layover and have a valid train ticket, inside the station you can find a waiting room or dormitory or even a clean, small-sized loft that is decently furnished. We have to wait for 8 hours for the next train, so we decided to rent the loft for 4 hours to freshen up. This has really surprised me, I didn't remotely expect to see a big living room, a closet, a large bedroom with a television, and a nice and clean toilet. In this crazy hot weather, the air conditioning is truly a breeze. Our train has arrived at the station, and now we have to find the correct platform and the coach. Since our journey is overnight, we decided to get a first-class air-conditioned seat. Some of the super-fast train tickets include free meals with the ticket price, but unfortunately this one doesn't have that luxury. The first-class compartments are much cleaner and less crowded. The cabins have hard sliding doors, which gives you some privacy and safety. Indian Railways provides bedding such as pillows, bedsheets, and towels, and these cabins have easy climbing steps for upper berths, mirrors, power outlets, and privacy curtains. Surely, the comfort in this coach is much better, and it's worth the money. After a 10-hour journey, we have arrived in Mangalore, and we hopped into our pre-booked taxi for Mukambika. This ride is another 3 hours, and most of it through the national highway. India is a culturally diverse country, and you can see through across the length and breadth. At times you will be wondering how Indians navigate smoothly through what we travelers would call a chaos in roads, it is just another miracle. All through this ride, I could only admire this beautiful landscape with rich vegetation and amazingly hospitable people. The Kolur region is surrounded by mountains and rivers with lush forest cover. This is the holy Sauparnaka River, and it flows near Mukambika Temple. It is believed that Garuda or the eagle named Suparna performed penance on the banks of the river and attained salvation, and thus the river got the name Sauparnaka.
The river flows in front of the road that leads to the main entrance of the temple. In India, cows are considered sacred, and they are treated with respect and care, and here it is no different. Mukambika Temple's history can be traced back to nearly 1,200 years ago. It is said that the goddess Sarasvati of learning and wisdom received extreme worship from the renowned Hindu scholar and saint Adi Shankaracharya from the state of Kerala. Inside the temple, this iron pillar exposed to harsh coastal rain has not rusted in over 2,000 years. It is believed that the pillar was built by tribals in the region and not by some well-known architects of the first millennium BCE. It propels scientific curiosity and deep interest in India's glorious metallurgical heritage from ancient times. This ancient Sarasvati Mandapam, or pavilion, is regarded as one of the most auspicious places for one to get initiated into the world of learning. Once here, any day is believed to be auspicious for Vidya Arambam, or the initiation into learning. From beginners of learning to experienced performers, everyone comes to the Sarasvati Mandapam to perform and get blessings of the Divine Mother. Homa is a fire ritual performed to seek the help of the deity. Hindus believe it helps to purify the mind and body and remove any difficulties we encounter in life. The noon processions start at the temple at around 12.30 p.m. every day with the Mahamangala Orathi. It is such an auspicious event to see the Divine Mother in all its glory carried by the priest, followed by hundreds of pilgrims. The procession will circle the temple three times, and it is called Pradhakshina. Pradhakshina is the clockwise circumambulation of sacred entities and the path along which this is performed. It is practiced in Hinduism and other religions such as Buddhism, Sikhism and Jainism. After the three Pradhakshina, the deity is taken back inside the temple and the puja and rituals will continue throughout the day. The rock carvings, unrusted iron pillars, and magnificent temple architecture are living examples of the rich culture, knowledge, and engineering skills that existed in southern India for thousands of years. The architecture of the Kolar Sri Mukambika temple belongs to the Kaladi period. On the western portion of the outer circle, the small temples for Sri Pranalingeshwara, Sri Parthashwara, Sri Panchamukhi Ganapati, Sri Chandra Malishwara, Sri Nanjandeshwara, Sri Anjaneya, Sri Venkataramana, and Tulsi Gopalakrishna are worshipped. The Sanctum Sanctorum, which is in a quadrangular shape, has a tower known as Vimana Gopura, which is used in the southern temple architecture. On the right side of the main entrance is the temple for Sri Virabhadra Swami, and after that, pilgrims offer prayer to the Subramanya Swami. Mukambika Temple is very special because it is part of the 108 Durga Alayas and 108 Shiva Alayas. 
Mukambika is Adi Parashakti, she is the Cosmic Mother. One can feel the nurturing and nourishment of the Divine Mother inside the temple in the form of Durga, Lakshmi, and Surasvati. And on the foothills of this mountain and on the banks of the Sauparnaka River, you will experience the serenity and calmness of Mother Nature.